Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video I want to discuss the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland with you, which we read over the past couple of weeks on this channel and also over on my Discord server. The book is about Alice who is sitting with her sister by the riverbank and at one point she sees a white rabbit and she decides to follow it down the rabbit hole and she enters this magical world called Wonderland where everything is strange and not as we're used to uh, dealing with in our everyday life. And she gets into conflicts with all kinds of creatures which we will dive into later in this video. Um, and then at that emotional high point of the story, Alice wakes up and realizes it was all just a dream. But what is this book about? Now, if you look over on Spark Notes and Study Notes, they talk about Alice becoming more mature in this book, even becoming sexually active. They go as far as saying that every time Alice grows big, that we need to see that as a phallic symbol. Now, for me, that is uh, not the way I interpreted that story. And what I do see is Alice is developing herself, but I would like to interpret that more in terms of her being on a quest. So the goal of this video essay is to show you why I think Alice is on a quest. But of course, you might not agree with that. Or maybe you spotted different kinds of interesting things about this book you would like to uh, leave down in the comment box below. And there we can then continue the discussion about this book and learn more from it. And I think that would be so much fun. Now, before we can fully explore that quest, it is essential to lay down a first premise. And that is how important it is for the story that Alice does not yet know that she is dreaming. And the author does that in a very subtle way. And for me, that only became really apparent when I compared the beginning of the book with the Disney movie. Because in the Disney movie, Alice just flat out says that uh, what her Wonderland should look like, how twisted things would be over there, and that that would be her dream. So we already know as people who are watching that movie that we're looking at that dream. And uh, in the book, there is a very subtle way of still giving us the illusion that what happens is real, so that we're confronted with real situations. Now, and in order to fully illustrate that, I'm going to read you the beginning portion of this book and compare it with the Disney movie. So let's dive into that. So Alice was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time, it all seemed quite natural. If I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it is, because everything would be what it isn't. And contrarywise, what it is, it wouldn't be. And what it wouldn't be, it would. You see? So by now, I hope you accept my premise that it is so important that we do not yet know that Alice is dreaming. Now, on to the quest. So the first element of a quest is the quester, which is often a young and inexperienced, immature, sheltered person. In this case, that's Alice. And we see that because the narrator introduces her as a little child. She doesn't like uh, books that have no pictures in them. She's considering making a daisy chain, which already signals the youthfulness of her character. Now, in the book, she also talks about curtsying to people. She has good manners. She even talks about this girl in a class who's uh, from a lower social economic milieu and she's looking down on that girl. So we do see her sheltered upbringing peek through in the story, which makes her the perfect quester on this quest. The second element of a quest is a place to go. Now, in this story, that is the garden that Alice wants to enter. And she sees that in the hallway, she peeks through the door and she's this beautiful garden. That is where she wants to go. 
And even throughout the stories where she's meeting different creatures, she always keeps on coming back to her wanting to go to that garden. So apparently that is an important place she wants to reach. The third element is the stated reason to go. Now that's not made super explicit in this book, but what we do know is that it is such a beautiful garden. It's the loveliest garden you have ever seen. It has beautiful fountains, beautiful flowers, and that apparently is the reason why Alice desperately wants to go there. The fourth characteristic is the challenges and the trials that our quester meets along the way. These are the various creatures that do not really help Alice move forward, and she's getting quite frustrated with them. And we'll dive into that in a little bit. The fifth characteristic is the real reason to go, and that is often self-knowledge. Now, in this case, I think for Alice it is becoming more confident in knowing who she is and having a firm sense of self-identity. Now, with the quest, the going and the doing isn't the idea of the quester, uh, him or herself, and the goal fades away as the story progresses. And you really see that also in Alice's adventures in Wonderland. Her main goal seems to be entering the garden, but the story doesn't end when she's there. Actually, there's quite a bit to come if she, when she entered that garden. So apparently that was not her main goal. The story only ends when she reached the actual goal, which is when she reached her full uh, knowledge about who she is as a person. Now we'll dive into that now in greater detail. So another thing we need to talk about is how Alice gets to that self-knowledge, because that is key when we're talking about the quest. Well, in the beginning of the book, Alice is actually quite hurtful to the animals. She's talking about her cat Dinah to a mouse and to birds. She even goes about kicking Bill out of the chimney of the white rabbit's house. And moreover, whenever animals ask her who she is, he, she says, I don't know. I know who I was this morning, but apparently now that I've changed sizes, I must be a completely different person. She's crying quite a lot and she's really confused about who she is. Then at one point in the story, she's going to meet the Duchess and she meets the baby. And that is the first point where she stands up for someone, for the little pig because they're throwing around pans and pots and whatever it is, uh, and she is worried about that creature. And that is the first signal that makes her rise to the occasion and discovering her identity. Then a bit later in the story, Alice grows again and becomes so tall, she's being accused by a pigeon of being a snake. And she finds that so unjust that she says, no, I am not, I am a little girl. And that is actually the first hint we get in the story that she has this strong feeling of who she is. It is also at that point that she discovers the door to the garden. So apparently she needed to make that discovery before she was allowed to go into that garden. So and when she enters that garden, again she stands up for other people there and again for herself. But in the end, the major confrontation is when she stands up for injustice in general. Because the trial that's being held against the knave who apparently stole the tarts that are right in the middle of the table, um, uh, she stands up for the injustice of that entire system. And that seems to make sense because often we feel it's more easy to stand up for someone else than for yourself. So she makes that step first. Then she stands up for herself. And then she stands up for an entire system and a value that she stands for. And after that, after she's made that statement, she wakes up. So that is her identity then. She knows not only who she is, she also knows when a system is unjust. And that self-knowledge, when she reaches that point, that is when she wakes up. And that was the end goal of her quest. Now, and what we see later on in the story in its ending, that's where we see that she will never forget that lesson that Wonderland taught her. So again, I think that that strengthens the case for this quest. So from my reading, the main theme of this book is that you will always be able to find out who you are, no matter how weird or strange those circumstances, you will find out who you are, especially when you face injustice. There's one final thing we need to talk about, and that is the idea of doubling and mirroring, which is hidden in this book. 
Now, some of that information I found myself, but I also watched this lecture by Robert Douglas Fairhust, and he really clearly explains uh, how that idea works, not only in this book, but also in Alice Through the Looking Glass and in the author's real life. So if you're curious about that, uh, look in the description box and I'll make sure to link it there as well. So this idea of doubling is also very important to Lewis Carroll, the author of this book. And we see that because various elements have a partner, so to say. We have a real life Alice on which this book was inspired and we have the fictional Alice. But Alice herself is also talking about how she's actually two people. A person who is brave and who is not afraid of anything, but also a person who gets down quite easily and who is crying when things are not working out the way she wants them to. We also see it in the puns that, uh, uh, that the author uses. And there's one in particular that I found extremely funny. Alice felt sure she would catch a bad cold if she did not get dry very soon. Ahem, <coughs> said the mouse with an important air. Are you all ready? This is the driest thing I know. Silence all around, if you please. William the Conqueror, whose cause was favoured by the Pope, was soon submitted to by the English, who wanted leaders. And had Another way in which those doubles have meaning is, uh, for example, in the combination of existing animals and uh, fictitious animals, thereby creating some sort of hybrid, such as the mock turtle. We read this book together in order to practice our annotation and analysis strategies. So of course there are a few things that I want to say about that as well. Now, as you know, I made this little annotation guide for myself in order to make sure that I would focus on all of the important literary elements throughout this book. And that really worked for me. In addition to that, I read the book twice because the first time I was just focusing on what happens in the story and maybe noting down some of the major things that didn't hinder my flow. So for example, the introduction of a new character, my own comments as a reader. And in my second read, I was more able to focus on all of the other elements. And because I know how it ended, it helped me keep focus on how to better understand the storyline as a whole. I also made a summary for myself where I noted things like what is the main location of each chapter, what was Alice's size because I was having this idea that maybe her size, the location and what happens that they are related with each other. I noted the main conflict but also the style of writing. So sometimes you saw that the author used uh, the same words. So in the beginning he talked about Alice being curious but then things became queer and mad. But when Alice started to find herself, he again started using words like curious, signaling from my perspective that she was becoming again confident in who she was, which was curious. And finally, I watched the Disney film as well as the 2010 adaptations, just because those movies really compared and contrasted for me uh, uh, what was different than the original book and why maybe that difference mattered and what that meant for the original. And what I came to realize, and I think that is so fascinating about literature, that if you really want to understand a book, you can study it for the rest of your life and keep using different perspectives to analyze that story and to better understand it. Now, of course, that is not what I will actually do. I will move on now to my next reading, but I think that's just a very interesting insight from this field in general. Now, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and make sure to go on board for this reading journey that we do together. And I look forward to see you again very soon. Bye.